Philadelphia, are you ready? <laughs> no, he said, are you ready? This is Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, your first stop for everything professional wrestling. So sit back and enjoy wrestling talk at its finest with your hosts, Larry Hall and Joe Corrado. Welcome into another episode of Brotherly Love Wrestling Podcast, and today we just have a, a little shoot in the shit session with Hale Collins. He's going to join us on the show. Um, decided just, I don't know, there's not a lot going on. We can talk a little WrestleMania, talk uh, anything Hale wants to talk about, which with Hale is bound to be anything. So uh, let's get right to it, and we can bring you back into the now. Everything that happens now is happening now. What happened to then? That's a when just now. We're at now now. Go back to then. When? Now. 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 Why? We missed it. When? Just now. When will then be now? Soon. Alright, returning to Brotherly Love for the first time in a while, we have Hale Collins. Hale, welcome back. Hey, what's up, guys? I guess uh, so living in the now is not so great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say that. So how, is, how is your living in the now? Uh, it's pretty boring. I, uh, I have to say I'm just, uh, like I actually detailed my whole car for the first time in a long time. And now I feel like I have a new car again. <laughs> now, but I, far as, that you can't really drive that much. Yeah, exactly. So, like, it's all ready to go once the time is now, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's like... Okay. But, I, 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 but, like, it's, like, so weird, because, like, now, like, I'm actually, like, turning into, like, this weirdo that goes for walks and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm, like, I was always, like, why the hell are those people just walking? Who just goes for a walk? Who gives a fuck? You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so, I'm, like, but now I find myself walking around my development saying hi to people. It's the most cheesiest living I've ever lived in my life. <laughs> Are you saying? Like, oh, you. <laughs> what are you saying? <laughs> no, you go ahead. I was gonna say. So you're telling me when this is all said and done, you're not gonna look back at this time and reflect and and be nicer to people? No, because I'm being super nice to people now. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, okay, go for this walk is so awkward. It's like it's like literally living like the Walking Dead life in the beginning. Before, like, everyone turns to zombies, you know? Like, like, the, you, like you see someone, but you, but you kind of, like, know they see you. So then you obviously have to have this awkward conversation because it's too weird. You can't go, like, oh, let me shake your hand. It's, like, a six feet apart, you know? So it's, like, so, it's, like, so awkward. It's, like, hey, oh, hey, all right, well, uh, see you later. All right, see you later. Get some beers and stuff like that. 
that. And uh, they all looked at me like, uh, no. I'm like, oh. <laughs> so I guess, I guess, I guess trying to put together a social gathering is not the way to go right now. But I'm just saying, in the future, maybe we could have a block party since, you know what? There's other people that live around here. You know? No. Became, uh, you became that weirdo? Oh, yeah, I'm trying. I, 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 well, it was just like a, a quick thought. I didn't really think it through. It was just like a, well, I got to say something. Hey, you know what? Maybe we should do a block party or something. But I got shot down. And, and then, like, then I thought about it as I walked alone back to my house. I'm like, why the fuck would I ever want a block party with these schmucks? <laughs> <laughs> what, a hor- what a horrible idea. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. But have you guys been watching a lot of wrestling? Uh, believe it or not, not as much as I thought I would be being home every day. Yeah, yeah, sure. kind of. I mean, I watched the, I watched Mania, watch AEW, and I'm watching Raw at the moment. But I mean, really, I haven't really caught up on anything that I wanted to catch up on. It's yeah, yeah no. It's all it's all repeats. There's nothing nothing new. So I, I gotta like really think and be like, oh man, I wanna watch I watched ninety six batch of beats last week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you find yourself watching like the weirdest pay per views, you know. And and yeah, like I'm like thinking about I'm like watching, I'm like, man, like what the hell? Back in the day I was like, Man, this was I mean, a lot of it was still cool, but now knowing backstories and shit, like the Benoit and Sullivan thing, like I was watching that match. And I was like, man, he really did fucking hate the guy. Yo, ben they fucking each other up. Ben Wild Yo, those legitimately guys. hate him. Yo, they hit each other so hard. You know, I'm like, they were just so aggressive. You know? Like, I you never, remember, when I remember. I'm oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, you can tell when that match was over and, and it not ending for like five minutes later because they were still fighting each other was legit. Yeah, I remember, I remember back in, like, 96, I was so young. Now, I'm, I'm going to think it back to myself. I remember my thoughts as I was watching Ben Wall and Sullivan. I was like, wow, this is really aggressive. They're either yeah. really, really good or they hate each other. Yeah, sad. sometimes both really make something great, you know? Yeah. And back then, there really wasn't too many, like, shoot fights. Uh, or... There might have been, actually. I was really young, too, so I guess I can't really speak on that. <laughs> you know, there probably have been a lot of cheap fights. <laughs> Especially back in that day when everyone's fucking ego was going crazy. Oh, uh, man, imagine how big the egos were. Man. Imagine, like, wow. It must have been so uncomfortable in the, in the back during, like, when they went to WCW to W, they all merged. And, like, oh, man, it must have been, like, a political warfare. I was thinking more like when fucking Bret Hart went to WCW. Imagine him and Hogan in a locker room together. They're like complete polar opposite of, of vision for the business. Yeah. And their fucking egos are huge. But yeah, you're yeah, right. Well, they mer- yeah, when they merge. But one thing I, I, I look back at now as an adult, like, you know, like when Nash and Hall went to WCW and then you had Sean and Triple H at w, you know, WWE, they're both doing their thing. There's no way those four didn't continue to communicate. Yeah, I mean, you would think those two, they're, they were the click. They were best friends. Yeah so, yeah, so it's not like they just didn't talk until they went to WWE again. They probably talked so much during that whole war, and it was probably, I would love to be in on those conversations too they talked about. And, you know what I mean? Because, like, I think text messaging was probably our, Texas started being around. I know it was around 2000, but we're not really sure before that. They had the, uh, the chirps, the, the next hell chirps. They probably did that. Yeah, I don't know. I was thinking how they, yeah, how they communicated because, I mean, it's a lot easier now, but I mean, I'm sure they communicated during the whole war, which is fascinating. I wish they talked about that. Like, what did you guys talk about? Like, you know? they knew, like, Nash and Hall knew that Sean had Vince around his finger, so they knew that they were a big part of creative. I think that's why Nash wanted to want in the studio. He wanted to be like promoter so big because he knew how to compete yeah. with Sean. 
Yeah, it's uh, it's a. think of this Firefly Funhouse match with Cena and Wyatt last night? Um, well, when I, when I, as I'm watching I'm like, what the hell is going on? You know, and, and I'm like, this is really different, but I'm not sure if I like it or I'm not sure if I hate it because I kind of like, have like that somewhat old school mentality, I guess you could say. But then I just let my, I let the gates open and I just really took it all in. It was awesome. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like it was very entertaining. I feel like it opened the door to so many different things. Uh, even though Matt Hardy was like, you know, you know, started it all, but like knowing WWE's on board with this kind of thing, it only tricked my like, crit- like my brain on thinking now they can do Sting vs. Undertaker next year and make it awesome. Yes. Yeah, I think that was one. That was everyone's initial thought process was, holy shit, they found the they found the recipe. They can do it now and not risk injury to either of the two. 
Yeah, think about like the kid inside you, like the kid inside of me. When I try to separate my brain from like the business and being a fan, is that like that's also it's like a like has them too like a complex kind of thing going on. Like that, that's a it's a cool different part of wrestling now. And uh, I'm, I mean, it does break kayfabe extremely, you know, because you know, they're obviously acting, you know. So it yeah. takes away from that. It takes away from that competitive aspect of it all, you know. But but I think it should be very chosen widely the, of the two people that can pull it off and the people that watch wrestling be into it for a different reason, you know. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the, I mean, the Firehouse, the Firefly Funhouse was, I mean, maybe 2% wrestling and the rest was all story driven. Yeah, which was great because you brought, you brought it down, back memory lane as a fan. You love when they talk about the past and the now, you know? It's like, oh, it's very entertaining. And like seeing the different characters that once were, seeing them just up as, uh, it was Hogan, like acting like that, you know, like he's the Hogan of like, he could have been like the Hogan of today. You know, yeah. If you want that, you know, and I thought that was excellent. Just seeing like that whole trippy NWO feel. It was like it was like a lot of emotions throughout the whole thing, and it was all said and done. I'm like, wow, I was really entertained during the whole time. I was into it the whole time, and like, how can you speak badly of something that you were into the whole time? It was no. I mean, it it tough, and a couple things that they did with the the fun house is that. They made fun of themselves a lot too. They 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 mocked themselves a lot, and that kind of takes the words out of everyone else's mouth. The people that usually hate things, since they hate on themselves in it, they kind of. I think that's why people didn't like it. It's because they couldn't hate on it because they'd already mocked themselves. If that yeah, which is sense. always yeah, which is always the best thing to do. Like to shut the haters, just call if you call your own bullshit. So. People can't hate on you. Like, you can't, it's like kind of like when Eminem came back in, uh, in, um, in eight, mi- uh, eight, 8 Mile. Remember, he, like, he like, called all his flaws out, and like then the guy wanted to battle back, but he couldn't because he had nothing on him because he already called it. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Yep. You know, so it's like, it's like it, 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 that, that helps out a lot. It's actually brilliant that they did that, you know? I like that they, they it was almost like, I mean, I just might be overthinking it, but it was almost like it was just a sub. It was like his subconscious. It was the subconscious of Cena or a dream, and the Fiend and Bray Wyatt were pretty crook. Yeah, it was it gave me that nightmare on Elm Street feel. Mm-hmm. You know, like Cena was tra- like Cena was trapped in a dream, and, and like uh, Wyatt was Freddy controlling him. You know, yeah, and, and was- like you see, like yeah, you see Cena like trying to like. Uh, fight, fight the power that's over his body, but he can't. But his mind's there, you know. Like his body's doing something else, you know. Yeah, I thought that was really cool. I think like it was. It's almost like they WWE knew what they were doing in the sense that okay, we'll let Matt Hardy go. We know he's this creative mastermind. And he's just out there with all of his thought process that's different than everyone else. But they have a Bray Wyatt in their back pocket as well, who has proven to be just as, as freaking bizarre and creative. Because I think that, maybe Cena had a little bit of input, but I, that felt like that was pretty much Bray Wyatt's brainchild. Oh, man. I, I, like, Bray Wyatt is so brilliant. I, like, even when he did those probe, like, he, he did, a, you know, when it sparked my eye, Bray Wyatt was when, he did that promo on NXT where, like, they're basically giving, like, a cue and they're all in the ring and the guy gave, like, a, a minute promo. Remember that one guy did, like, mustache or whatever? Right, like, um, well, Bray Wyatt, like, had, like, such a cool promo that he was, like, saying, I'm a, like, I'm a limous, I'm a bulldozer with a limousine engine. You know, like, he was, like, if you go back and watch that, like, minute promo of him and, um, was, like, when I was doing all that next stuff, but, like, trying out for it in a way, uh, watch his promo. Then was awesome, you know? So like he's always, I feel like he's always been so good. He has, and he's, he's when he came in as the Wyatt family, and he was the creepy guy with the Hawaiian shirt and all that craziness that he was talking. And see how he, like, how did he go from that to how involved, evolved to the C 
scene is like crazy. Like his mind, it's warped, but in the right way. Yeah, it's pretty cool because like he uh, he's definitely evolving from it. Like he went from like the Devil's Rejects to now uh, morphing into like a Freddy Krueger, Jason kind of character. You know, yeah. Uh, and, and and it's cool. It's like he's like making he's like. I don't know, taking one thing from another and making it to his own, you know, maybe he did think of Freddy, maybe, you know, maybe that sparked an idea and just evolved into this, the fun, you know, so, like, it's, it's like, like the it's same the, trajectory as the, as the Undertaker, that's what I would compare it to, like, going from yeah, the dead man. Thing, <laughs> yeah, and, like, you never not liked one of the, during when the Undertaker did his thing differently, you, you never not liked it. It was always good. Like, even like, with the purple taker, that was cool. Or with, like, the, you know, uh, what's that, what, uh, the corporate. No, the ministry. ministry. Yeah, the ministry, that was really cool, you know. Uh, yeah, it was a little bit like, more gothic. Yeah, but it was different, you know. And but it wasn't bad. Yeah, that's at least why, I, you know, I wasn't really, I mean, I, it was still good for the time. But I mean, like, I never really, I, I like, you know, we grew up watching the Undertaker, so it was a big change, you know? Yeah. So, Hale... I kind of agree with that one. Hale, with the... Uh, I mean, you have... The way that Edge and Orton put on their match, a completely different style than any other match that was on the card, and pretty brutal, and especially with Edge coming back from all the injury problem he has had, what did you think of how how he handled himself and how he looked. Um, I thought how Edge handled himself. Yeah. Yeah, I think he was excellent. Like, that guy, I think he looks like the best shape in his life. <laughs> I, uh, I would concur with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, I, uh, I, mean, I, I feel like, I mean, the match they had could have been a match on any pay-per-view, not in front of fans. You know, they could have battled for the back. You know what I mean? Yeah, I uh, think that was the safest way they they went with that. Yeah, and like plus like Edge didn't have to come off taking all those ring bumps right away. You know? Yeah, it was. Well, uh, I mean, he still looked like he took some pretty big bumps, but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but so, like yeah, but I'm saying like not as much as he could have. You know? Yeah, yeah. In the ring, he would have been. It, the pace that the match was going and how it needed to go, he would have been bumping like crazy. Yeah, even like, you know, at the end when the end of the match is crazy, there's a lot of bumps going on, you know. I mean, his top rope, his top rope elbow deal, that was, you know, that was, that was great. You know, and, uh, you know, I took those falls and that fall jolts your whole body, you know. It impacts your whole body like like a car crash. You took one of those not too long ago. Yeah, and that sucked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you never know. You make one wrong landing and you're out for a couple months. Or yeah, that. dude. Yeah, it was two seconds. So it's crazy that he did that. So really, but you know, that's why he's edge. You know, he's, he's one of the best. So, yeah, I think... I mean, it, it, did, it, it was a little lanky, but I mean... That was the match that you knew was going to be. They were going to. It, it was like Batista and Triple H last year. They're going to get two legends that they're going to get time to no matter what. Yeah, and like he, like plus Randy Orton, like top notch. So why not put Edge in the ring one of the best there is right now? You know. So yeah, I would say. I mean, Orton. I don't think he gets his his due when it comes when they talk about greatest to ever do it. I mean, I guess that's because he's still doing it, but he's been around forever and he's done everything. And he knows how to make every different person look good. Like, he he does that with everybody. Yeah, and his timing is impeccable. impeccable. He never messes up. You ever see Randy Orton mess up? No. His mannerisms in the ring are like perfection. His reactions and his, his expressions. Yeah. Like, ever. Like, if you watch his early stuff, he did. It's like, he doesn't mess yeah. up. He was a freak. He, he was definitely a freak. Yeah. yeah. But, yeah, I think, you know, you gotta know it. It's like, this WrestleMania is totally different. They had to work with the hat, and I think they did a great job. You know what I mean? That was a hot-ass angle, going a really 
really strong. And, you know, they got the cards dealt with them, and they, I feel like they nailed it also, you know? Yeah. Did you ever think you were going to be in a time where you could say that the wrestling world pretty much shut down? You know, it's never shut down since, like, 1912 or some shit. Yeah. You know, like, it's always been going on forever. So people have died when the show still went on, you know? Like, yeah. It's just rest, like, wrestling is definitely... But come on, Jericho talking to the drone promos? <laughs> <laughs> So good, dude. How, how good is that? Have you watched that? Yes. Yeah, that was probably one of my favorite things I've seen. <laughs> no, it's so good. Just put the camera on Jericho, and uh, it'll be fine. <laughs> dude, he got it out of the fucking hot tub with leather pants on. <laughs> that was the best. <laughs> like, like, it can't, like and, I, and, I like, and I like how he took a sip out of the bottle. I put it down, and then they grab his glass. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally nothing that he can't do on the mic. Nothing. He can get over there. Yeah, just fucking shit, dude. It's so good, man. Like that when he talked, when he did a pro, like after he did the pro with the drone, like holy shit, that was entertaining, and he just did a pro on, on a drone. <laughs> yeah. Like that's 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 tough. Like when he released the dogs on. <laughs> The uh, best of the like, most harmless dogs ever. <laughs> <laughs> Put, like a little chihuahua in there too. Like, <laughs> yeah, he didn't even make it out of the house. <laughs> he was still in the corner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, that, was, like, that was so funny. Everything about it was great. Everything. Uh, no, it's just some, just some really good stuff going on right now. Like, regard, like even though you know, left on a, on a pause. You know, like they're really trying, thinking outside the box. And like we're after the whole smoke clears, I think we're gonna have a lot of like different outlets to shows. You know, different kind of entertainment you know, for everybody. You, you think the way that these companies go about things is gonna be completely different? Do you think that they've opened up a couple more avenues to be like, all right, well, this worked when there was no wrestling. Will it work when there is wrestling? Yeah, of course, everything works for me. Like, I think things would be shorter. Like, like, um, like you know, they're not going to have those, they're not going to have, like, 45-minute matches when there's people in the crowd. You know? Yeah. What do you think about, because I think that the one thing that has been, like, above par lately has been each company's promo work. Like, I think the promos have gotten substantially better. Without crowds. Oh man, like, like the, you, we're, we're watching one of the best promo eras ever. If you really watch them, you know, like it, it's good, man. And it's insane because I mean, what it, I hope that it's able to keep up when the crowds get back. But I feel like I feel like I mean I know the what chant will never die, but I feel like if people would actually listen, like like right now they're kind of forced to. How much better it would be instead of the oh, yeah, trying like, to get themselves over? Yeah, that's what, that's what's cool about it because you really got to pay attention now. Everyone's getting crushed. Maybe can I imagine like every promo was awesome. We just didn't realize it because the crowd is so distracted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, I mean, it really could have been like if you because it fucks up your cadence. Like these guys have they they're able to follow their cadence now and they're able to get to the point and say it how they want to. Was people in the background yelling fucking crazy shit at you. Kind of hard. Yeah, it's like, yeah, remember that, that, that video that came out that surfaced that when Christian Bale totally went off of that, that person that walked on set and interrupted him? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah. That was on back then, right? What was it? I don't know what set it was, but whatever it was, it really pissed off Christian Bale to like, I don't know, a level pissed off. Like, like something that like, whatever this person did, you just don't do it to that man, and you did it. <laughs> and he was, he was so pissed off. At, like, he probably could have killed someone, the way he talked, you know? But, but the, what I'm trying to get to is, like, these wrestlers, like, the wrestlers are doing this, so they have full focus and not being distracted. So they got to get themselves in the mind, you know? And, and, and sometimes people go through a lot of channels to get there, and 
when they finally get there, they're there. And it takes a bit to get there. So if you when you get interrupted by any kind of way, you're not there anymore. Yeah, you're thrown off. Yeah, you're like not there. It takes. It might not be able to get back to that level in your mind, you know, because you're because you're just too little, too distracted, you know. Yeah, you were you were at the point of where okay, I just want to get this over with now, so I can get the hell out of here. But, yeah, so I, I I get the job done, you know. So I gotta make a couple points. So I gotta get the fuck out of here. So I gotta make sure I make the points. But if, maybe if they fuck up during promos, maybe the promos will be the best ever, like Jake the Snake every time. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if, if this if this could do anything for us, it, it can get the promo game back. Yeah, good point. That's good. That's a good. Uh, that's a good thought. Hale, um, well, four or five episodes ago, we had Dan Barry on our oh, show. <laughs> so you know, yeah, I don't even have to continue what I'm saying to know what's coming, and of course, Bill Carr as well, and. Your name happened to pop up a couple times on our show. Ah, oh, real nice. Uh, what, what, what would that say, huh? <laughs> well, well, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> they told us that you crashed your car. Uh, yep. Yeah, we that's got... Reason why I, that's the only reason why I detailed it, because I just got it fixed. It looks great. I was like, man, I got to change this car a little better. So I detailed the hell out of it, so now I got some time. I'm like, man, I got like a new car again. It's all fixed, side to clean. Yeah, I think it was the first time we've ever had breaking news on our podcast that Hale Collins had gotten a car accident live when we were recording. Yeah, it was awful. Man. It was, it was, uh, it was really something. I was just, uh, I was. Did he tell you how it happened? No, he didn't. They said yeah. something about uh, bees. Yeah, no. It, it was, uh, I'm just driving along, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, like, I took my eyes off the road for like two, three seconds, I crashed right into the fucking, just this mailbox, <laughs> you, ever, you ever saw, like, like, a little, little one, like, a pretty shitty, or like, you know, barely standing up, it would have been awesome, no, this thing was like, this person like, dug a six foot hole, poured it with cement, <laughs> had like, the mailbox from like, Terminator, <laughs> and I'm almost positive the mailbox is still standing because I got the fuck out of there. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie. I'm like, fuck this mailbox. I'm out. So I just drove off. And when I got home, I looked at my car and I'm like, holy shit! This is horrible. You know, like I, I, like, I had, I had to get a new fender, a hood, a bumper, a light fixture. All this, and then I get it painted. Then I had to convince someone to give me a good deal on like installing it all. And like you can't, like you can't go through a shirt to be like, hey, I hit a mailbox, cover it. <laughs> I, mean, I don't want that shirt. <laughs> like, I, don't want, I, don't, I don't want that. So I did it all on my own. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, I'm looking at my car. Man, it looks fucking good again. I'm out of details since we're about to live the walking dead life. <laughs> <laughs>
three hundred before. Yeah, I think at one of Tommy's events. So being able to do that one more time would be with Team Tremendous. Yeah, well, I, somehow I always end up taking their finish, and then I can't walk for a week. <laughs> so like, so that's one thing I would do. I would go. I would go into that match very, very extremely aware of not taking that move ever again. Because, uh, I don't know what it does, but it puts me out, and, and, I, and I like to get my revenge on that one as well, other than my Twitter blowing up with Katie Dude references. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was a very good interview. <laughs> yeah, well, well I'm sure. <laughs> You were the you were the man of the hour without even knowing it. Yes. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Wait, what well, you know you know you know what you gotta do when you go on Twitter after this? After this, go on Twitter and ask Bill Carr how his beard is doing. How his beard? His beard. Okay. Because uh he ha- he shaved it so he doesn't get the coronavirus. <laughs> really? Yeah, so so he shaved his whole beard, and now he looks like a totally different person. I go to him I'm like, dude, you can totally, not to sound cheesy or whatever, but he can totally commit a crime out in public, go home, shave his beard, and nobody would never know. <laughs> that different, huh? Well, he had a long-ass beard. He had a long-ass beard for a very long time, like, but like, I only remember, like, when, when Bill Carter started, I think it was, like, uh, I forget the year, probably 2008 or all there. Uh, like, Bill was only 20 years old when I met him. You know what I mean? Like, he was so young. That's the only time I, he had no beard. It's the only time I've ever seen him without a beard. So yeah, I forgot all about it. 12 years? 12 years of a beard? Yeah, but I think he got rid of it in OVW or... Uh, OVW or FCW for a while, but like, I don't know. He just looked a different person. Totally different. I wonder, did a lot of people doing that? Shaving their beard for Corona? Uh, yeah, I guess the Corona is trapped in your beard. <laughs> so, and also you can't wear a mask. You can't wear the mask with a beard. That's fucking crazy. Yeah, so, uh, the whole beard era might be ending. So, is the mustache still good, though? <laughs> I, I, I think that's even worse. Because, <laughs> like, you breathe right there, you know, like, you hold, like, you know, like, you, like it's right there by your mouth and your nose. So, if anything, if you're going to grow some things, uh, grow some sideburns. There you go, some chops. <laughs> Sick chops? Yeah, get those going. Because, like, you know, they're not going to, like, like, drift into your nose. <laughs> So this will be the era of, like, mutton chops will be coming back? <laughs> Joe, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw up, but my wife's going to hate it. You know, everyone's going to hate it, but maybe it'll be cool. Who knows? <laughs> now, nah, don't say I'm, I'm ripping off of Matt Jackson, but really, I'll be ripping off of Rico. <laughs> yeah, nice. Nice. Rico was a great performer. <laughs> All right, Hale. Hale, we wanted to uh, thank you for taking the time. It was really good catching up with you. We'll talk with you again. And um, hopefully the next time we talk, uh, everything will be back to normal and uh, you'll be able to get back to wrestling in front of live crowds. Yeah, man, I can't wait. Well, I always appreciate you guys having me on. And like you always like living there now. And uh, I think what I'm going to do now is go for a nice night walk, I guess. <laughs> Make sure you say hi. Yes. To all your days. Yeah. No, I tell you what, if anyone's walking at this time of night, I'll be so pissed off. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're going to be, get ready to be pissed off. <laughs> yeah, it's like this place is a ghost town now, all of a sudden everyone's going for these walks, I mean, fuck. <laughs> Alright, Hale, thanks so much, and uh, we'll be talking to you soon. Alright, man, don't forget to ask about the beard. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on it. Alright, later. Hey. <laughs> All right, there you have it, our interview with Hale Collins. And uh, it was good yeah, ha- having him really back. Did you call that an interview? Uh, I mean, I guess not. That wasn't really an interview. Not really I mean, an interview. When Hale, Hale comes on, he's not an interview anymore. He's he's 
graduated to third co-host. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. I mean, we can't really, we didn't really talk about anything interview-wise. We just talked about, I mean, anything that was remotely happening right now, and a little bit of why we shouldn't take walks. Yeah, <laughs> or keep our beards. Apparently. Yeah. What the fuck. I'm a, a, I look like a werewolf right now. I got a beard and long ass hair. Oh yeah, a beard and an afro. Yeah, I'm was, starting to look like fucking uh, Marv from Home Alone. <laughs> well, I mean, ain't that your life's goal anyway? I mean, yeah. I'm gonna work on getting electrocuted. <laughs> yeah, you still haven't figured out that uh, that barber issue, have you? No, I got the clippers. I just haven't found the time yet. And now I'm getting to the point of like, do I just let it grow out and be obnoxious with it? Well, because I, mean, I have another. It wouldn't be you if you weren't month. obnoxious with it. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, do I just like go with this next month and see what I get? If it starts to, if I start getting the wings and it starts flipping up, then we're in trouble. I'm not letting it go. <laughs> I'm just going to keep letting it grow. <laughs> so the next wrestling event I go to, I'll look like. Uh, Captain Lou Albano. <laughs> God, I hope that happens. I mean, I'll probably be 30 pounds heavier anyway. Yeah, won't we all? But yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I can't, I I can't handle this much, much longer. I'm eating way too much of a lot of just shit. Yep. I got a bag of gummy bears upstairs and Oreos waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat them together. That that sounds about right. Yeah. Who cares at this point? Yeah. So I think uh, that'll wrap up our uh, shooting the shit session with Hale Collins. And yeah, uh, a little, uh, little mini episode for everybody. Yeah, and um, hopefully we will line up uh, someone else to talk to next week. Considering wrestling, for the most part, will be shutting down. WWE still. apparently is done after tonight. We'll see what happens with uh, AEW because apparently they have a lot of footage they've already shot. So still be some somewhat of new wrestling around, but we hope you enjoyed the show and uh, we'll be talking to you very soon.